www.thepeopleshow.com. We do welcome you and we do encourage you to be with us and pray with us and pray for us. I want to start the show today off on a very negative note and at the same time make it positive. Mission leader has been kidnapped from the Bible school in India. This is a press release from Carrollton, Texas, down in the gospel part of the country. But Gospel for Asia officials have confirmed that a senior mission leader in India has been abducted by a terrorist group. On July the 23rd, around 7 p.m., Pastor Ponachan George was kidnapped by five armed terrorists from the Bible School campus operated by Gospel for Asia in the Karbi Analong district of Assam, India. Pastor George is reportedly being held in the forest out in the woods at a hideout at an unknown location. Death threats have been issued by his captors with demands for an undisclosed ransom amount labeled by GFA officials as a very large sum. Gospel for Asia has sent an email to its supporters urgently soliciting prayer for the safe relief release of Pastor George. The mission agency maintains a policy of non-negotiation with terrorists for money. In similar instances, it has relied solely on prayer and on fasting, reporting God bringing about miraculous releases. I am reminded in the midst of this critical time that the most important thing we can do is pray, said K.P. Yonahan, founder and president of Gospel for Asia. As we see in Acts 12, when the apostle Peter was put in prison, God's people prayed. They didn't raise money. They didn't pay uh, ransoms. They prayed, and God answered. Will you please join us? here on the Wiley Drake Show, here at First Southern Baptist Church, with the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C., with the California Prayer Team, with the Telephonic Prayer Meeting Team. Gospel for Asia is breaking with its usual low profile for the protection of the victim in such cases as the Indian news media begins its report on George's abduction. With concerns that the attention for national press may further endanger his life, the prayer request is made even more urgently. Gospel for Asia officials continue to work with the local and central government. Johanna Han has also personally sent a special communique to the Prime Minister of India asking for intervention. You pray about that as well, listeners. Pastor George oversees a ministry in the Karbi Analong region of India, which includes 26 Bridge of Hope centers, educating children, three radio broadcasts in Karbi, Assamese and Kuki languages, a Bible college, more than 200 well-established churches, and about 300 missionaries. And to those folk there, if I mispronounced your name with my terrible southern accent and my Americanism, I apologize. But God knows your name. Gospelforasia.org is where you can go and check them out. It's a nonprofit charitable organization dedicated to serving the needy uh, in word and deed to demonstrate the love of Jesus in developing countries in Asia. Gospel for Asia, Asia uh, supported national missionaries are seeing incredible fruit in the lives of people to whom they are proclaiming the love of Jesus Christ. Although they often risk persecution and uh, prosecution and sometimes even execution, Gospel for Asia has 67 Bible colleges throughout South Asia with thousands of men and women they're studying God's Word and undergoing intensive training in preparation for ministry. Most of the Bible college graduates will go into minister in these same dangerous areas. 
where the love of Christ has never been proclaimed. To schedule an interview with anyone, you can get in touch with them at 970-300-3120. 972-300-3120. If you have a radio program or a television program or a newspaper, I would recommend you contact them for an interview. And most of all, I recommend that you pray for them. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming to you today. Uh, like I said, started off with a negative, but, but going to a positive. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as your ambassador for the kingdom of God, I, your son, I, your child, come before you and say, Abba, Father, Daddy, I ask you, please intervene in the life of Pastor George. Put your angels around him, protect his body, his soul, and his spirit. And we'll look forward to giving you the honor and the glory for all that is done in this area of regaining his freedom. And we'll be glad to give you the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, if you have a prayer request, you have a praise report, you have a concern, I would encourage you to call me. You can reach me on a couple of telephone numbers. First of all, you can reach me on crusaderadio.com. You can reach me there on 559-592-5961. Give me a call and let me know what's on your mind. We're going to be talking about several things today that are on our mind um, in reference to what God is doing in the nation in which we live and what God is doing around the country. And so we want to encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to be in touch with us. Call us on 559-592-5961, and we'll be glad to receive your call, and we thank you for that. God bless you, and thank you, and we do appreciate it. We would welcome you to give us a call and let us know uh, what's going on in the part of the country that you're at and where you're located. So please give us a call, would you please? We would welcome you and we would uh, encourage you to give us a call. Thank you so much and God bless you. And uh, Brother Mel Pite is uh, on with us hopefully today. And uh, we thank the Lord for the opportunity we have and hope that he'll be able to send us an email or send us an instant message and so forth. But 559-592-5961. Now, there's another number. If that number gets busy, you can call us on the 800 number. If you are watching us on television and you call that 800 number, you will see me literally pick up this phone and answer it, and that will be me answering your call on the 800 number. The 800 number is 1-800-839-3002. Now, we heard a few days ago that a dear brother in Christ, Dan Cathy and the Cathy family, that have done such a great job over the years with an organization called Chick-fil-A. Now, Chick-fil-A is a great food product. Yes, it's fried, but it is really not too bad in that sense. It is very good. The taste is good. It's good for you. And we would encourage you to support Chick-fil-A for two reasons. Number one, because it's good food. And number two, because they are a Christian family. I remember when I was in seminary in 1972, a couple of my seminary professors who we subsequently fired because they were so liberal, but a couple of my seminary professors said, I can't believe that a company in the modern day and age, that is 1972, would have a policy of being closed on Sunday. Now, people in the South, people in Fort Worth, Texas, people in that area knew about what they referred to as blue laws. And, um, and so they sort of poo-pooed it and laughed about it. And there were some professors that said, can't believe in a modern day when people have to work every day that a company would be closed on Sunday. But the Kathy family said, no, we're not going to kowtow to these liberals. We're not going to kowtow to these people who want to live ungodly. We will not work on Sunday. 
Uh, that is a biblical principle, ladies and gentlemen. It's not just a Kathy family policy. It's a biblical principle to shut down the business on Sunday. I can remember growing up in the South where we had three or four drugstores in town, and only one of them was available on Sunday. They weren't open for business, but if you had a medication you had to get, they would go into the store on Sunday and give you your medication if you had a prescription. But that's all they would do on Sunday, and they even rotated that around amongst the stores. Now, there were people that criticized the Kathy family and said, you guys are old-fashioned, uh, you guys are too legalistic, and therefore, uh, you're wrong. Well, Mr. Kathy, the family, and all of their friends have maintained this business over the years. I don't know anything about it. I'm not a stockholder in Chick-fil-A, at least not at this point. I may become one. Somebody give me some money. Uh, but anyway, uh, I want you to know, folks, they are a successful business. They have run a very successful business. I was first exposed to them in 1972 when I was in a church in Arlington, Texas, and we decided that rather than burden our ladies to prepare food and to bring potluck and so forth on Wednesday nights so we could have our evening meal, we prevailed upon a local Chick-fil-A to furnish Chick-fil-A for our church, and they did so. And so for a long time, we had Chick-fil-A every Wednesday night. And I'll never forget when I first heard about it, and we did it, and then we were having something on Sunday at church. Rather than have a potluck, I said, we ought to call Chick-fil-A. We called Chick-fil-A, and the local manager said, I'm sorry, Pastor, but we're not open on Sunday. And I said, what? He said, yeah, we have a policy. We do not open on Sunday. And I said, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And so they're not open on Sunday. Never have been, never will be, as far as I'm concerned. And so they close on Sunday, and they honor the Lord's Day. I believe that's biblical. I don't care what the sodomites say. And folks, I refuse to call them anything other than that. You can call me mean. You can call me unkind. But I don't give a rip. I'm going to follow the word of God. The word of God calls them sodomites. And the word of God says if a man lays down with a man and a woman lays down with a woman, it's an abomination and they're sodomites. And if you want to know what God's opinion of sodomy is, just go read the Bible about two cities that laid down men to men and women to women and had such a terrible place. And it was called Sodom and Gomorrah. See what God's redevelopment plan was for the city of Sodom. And you'll find out what God still believes. Well, recently, the president and CEO of Chick-fil-A said that sodomy was going to bring America down and that God was going to punish America for sodomy. Now, I don't know how he said it. I don't have the in front of me, but I do know this. The news media, CNN and everybody else, have said that he is against homosexuals. He is against transgendered, and he is, but he's against the sodomites just like I am. And so they bragged that up, and the sodomites decided they would go and demonstrate against Chick-fil-A. Well, I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to challenge that. As a minister of the gospel, as the host of the Wiley Drake Show, on Wednesday of this day, we're, of this week, we're going to declare uh, Wednesday as Chick-fil-A Day. Now, that was not started by me. Somebody else did it. I just jumped on the bandwagon. I'm not ashamed. I wish I would have started it. I wish I'd have had that much insight, but I didn't. But when I heard that Dr. Billy Graham, 90-some-odd-year-old preacher of the gospel, said he commended Chick-fil-A. I said, Amen, Dr. Graham. Hallelujah. Now, folks, y'all know that over the years, even though my brother in Christ, Dr. Billy Graham, is a Southern Baptist, y'all know that I've disagreed with him sometimes. Sometimes he's not been as outspoken as he ought to have been, and I've let him know that. Uh, but I am with him on this. I'm with Dr. Graham. 
he said Chick-fil-A made the right decision, and I'm right beside him, right behind him, and with him. Now, as many of you know, I got in trouble with the IRS because I endorsed a political candidate. I still endorse political candidates, by the way, IRS, take a hike. I personally endorse political candidates every chance I get. My problem is I can't find somebody that I agree with to endorse for president this time around. If Mike Huckabee was running, I'd endorse him again. I cannot endorse a Mormon who's involved in a cult who believes he's going to become a god. I cannot also endorse a candidate who believes in a man as his prophet that was a pedophile, had sex and babies with little girls under the age of 10. That's Mohammed. I cannot endorse anybody related to that, nor related to the cult of Mormonism. They believe Jesus was the brother of the devil, and they believe they're going to become a god when they die. Well, I got news for them. Every Mormon that's ever died without Jesus is on fire right now for Jesus. They believe in the real Jesus, not another Jesus, and they're on fire in hell. And anybody else, Mormon, Muslim, or anybody else that dies without a personal relationship with Jesus is going to spend an eternity in the lake of fire at a place called hell. Now, that's not very nice, I understand that, but I'm not here to be nice, I'm here to be truthful. We're going to teach you the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help us God. Now, this week, this week is Chick-fil-A week, and I want to say to every store, every Chick-fil-A store, if you will allow Wiley Drake to come in and do a live broadcast in your store, we will do that. We will come to your store, and we will do a live broadcast on television from your local Chick-fil-A store. You just contact me or my producer. We'll work it out. We'll get there. Now, my shows are on here every day at 9 a.m. in the studio, as well as 5 p.m. in the studio. And I'm not going to neglect those shows. I'm going to be here in the studio all week. But if you'd like me to come to Chick-fil-A uh, during the morning time, sometime between, say, about 11 o'clock and, and noon or 1 o'clock, I'll be glad to come. If you want me to come there at noon or if you want me to come in the afternoon, I will come and do a live Wiley Drake show live from the Chick-fil-A store where you work and where you manage and so forth. But I will have to leave in time to be back here in the studio at 5 o'clock. So any day today, Monday through Friday, if you want Wiley Drake and crew to show up, we'll be glad to be there, and we'll be glad to brag on Chick-fil-A, and we'll be glad to tell people where you're located and tell people how to get to your store uh, if you'd like for us to do that, and we make that available to you. You can call my producer, Corey Harkins. Her name is C-O-R-I. H-A-R-K-I-N-S, Corey Harkins at gmail.com. She's no longer a Yahoo. She is now Gmail. <laughs> so you send her uh, uh, an email at Corey Harkins, C-O-R-I-H-A-R-K-I-N-S, Corey Harkins at gmail.com and say, I want you to come to my Chick-fil-A store and tell her where you're located and when you would like to have us. We could be there, say, at 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock or 1 or 2 or 3. Would like to not be there any later than 4 because I need to be back to the studio. But you just send her an email and say, I'd like for you to come to my store, give us the address, and we'll be there. Now, on Wednesday, on Wednesday, many people, Rick Santorum, Mike Huckabee, Dr. Billy Graham, Dr. Reverend Wiley S. Drake. Uh, I was at one time the second vice president of the Southern Baptist Convention. If you need some credentials, I am also the chairperson, the chairman. I don't use chairperson except for women, but I'm the chairman of the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. My co-chairman is none other than the right Reverend Dr. Clyde Rivers, who is a pastor 
but he is also the ambassador for the country of Burundi, the African country of Burundi. He is the co-chair. And I'm saying to you, as former second vice president of the Southern Baptist Convention, as the chairman of the congressionalprayerconference.com, as the facilitator of a prayer group called telephonicprayermeeting.com, and also is anything else that I have to do with, anything else that I'm associated with. Uh, I am also a chaplain to an organization called California Coalition on Immigration Reform. I am also a chaplain to a group called Minutemen. I am also a chaplain to other organizations. The Kelly Thomas Army, I serve as chaplain for that, and I serve as chaplain in many places. And I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I endorse Chick-fil-A, and I support their decision to stand firm against sodomy and to stand against the sodomites. Now, I said to my church this Sunday, from the pulpit here at the First Southern Baptist Church, I said to my people, if you will go to Chick-fil-A on August the 1st, on Wednesday, and have lunch, and give me your check. When you get your, when you pay your bill and you get your check, you get that check to me, and I will reimburse you for half of that check. That's what I told all of my listeners and all of my people for the Wiley Drake Show and for the First Southern Baptist Church in Buena Park. And I'm here to tell you, if you're listening to this show today, if you're listening to the Wiley Drake Show today and you heard about this on the Wiley Drake Show, if you go to Chick-fil-A on Wednesday and you have lunch or dinner, anytime on Wednesday, if you go there and you pay for your meal, please keep your check. Email me your check number and the amount and I will reimburse you for half of that check if you tell me you heard about it on the Wiley Drake Show or you heard about it at First Southern Baptist Church in Buena Park. You don't have to put it in my hand. I'll trust you. You email me. Uh, there should be a number on that check, and there should be an amount, obviously. You email me that number. You email me your mailing address, and I will send you half of the value of that check in a way of saying thank you for supporting our friends at Chick-fil-A. Now, friends, I hope you'll take advantage of that. This week is dedicated twofold, ladies and gentlemen. Number one, and specifically to the company called Chick-fil-A. And number two, we're dedicating this program and this week to organizations and companies, organization and companies who support Christian values who support Christian values. Whatever your company is, whatever your product is, if you support Judeo-Christian principles, I want you to call my producer and say, my name is, my company name is, and we support Judeo-Christian principles in our company, and I'd like to do an advertisement, a free advertisement uh, for my company, and we will put you on the air. You simply send an email to Corey Harkins at gmail.com. Corey Harkins at gmail.com, and she'll be more than happy uh, to let you do that. Okay, uh, we are going to have some guests in the studio in a little bit. We'll bring them in shortly. But in the meantime, uh, if you go to Chick fil A on Wednesday, email me, email me the check number and the check amount and I will reimburse you for half of that amount. You must send me a mailing address so I can get that mailing address to you, get that sent to you in the mail. Now, I will not send a check. I will not send a money order. I will send cash money, cash money. And I know what some of you are going to say because you're skeptical. Well, you can't put cash in the mail. Well, golly, just wake up, folks. You can. I do it all the time and I'm going to do it to you. If you don't want cash, then too bad. Uh, just don't get it. But if you will send me, if you'll email me the number of your check, the amount of your check, I'll send you cash money, cash money, 
uh, to you for half of that value. And if you'd like to do an advertisement, you'd like to do a voiceover, an MP3, whatever you'd like to do, a CD, a DVD, a tape. Uh, we even play eight tracks here. We still know how to do that. So if you get us a recording of your advertisement, we will do free advertisement for you on crusaderadio.com and on the wileydrakeshow.com on television. We'll be glad to do that. You can talk about your product. You can talk about your employees. You can talk about your business. You can give your name, your address, whatever you want to do. All I ask is, is that you commit before the Lord Jesus Christ and to us that you are a Judeo-Christian Bible believer. A Judeo-Christian Bible believer. Now, if you're not, you lie to me, well, God will deal with you. We'll just leave that up to the Lord. Now, uh, we're going to have a couple of uh, guests in the studio with us in a little bit. We'll deviate a little bit from the Chick-fil-A theme, we'll deviate a little bit from where we're at. But I want to encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, please continue to pray for our friend in India, our, uh, our friend there in India who, of course, is none other than uh, Pastor George, Pastor George. And so I would encourage you to indeed uh, communicate with us. Let us know that you're praying for Pastor George. Are you praying for Pastor George? Can you pray for him, would you please? Uh, his name is, last name is George, and I would encourage you to please pray for him and let him know, let his family know. He has a wife, and he has two children, two beautiful daughters, and uh, we just praise God uh, for, uh, for them and ask that the Lord would indeed uh, continue, continue to uh, indeed, serve the Lord no matter what happens with their loved one. I can't imagine if I were in that circumstance and my spouse had been kidnapped. I can't imagine the feelings that, he, that she must be going through. And daughters. Can't imagine what those two daughters must be going through. But you know what? My God is a big God. And my God can protect those daughters. And my God can protect that dear wife. In fact, my God can also t t protect uh, Pastor George. And we're looking forward, I'm looking forward to the day when, when he comes on the line with us or somebody comes on the line with us and says he's free, he's back home, he's unharmed, and we'll give God all the glory and all the credit for that. In the meantime, I want to ask you, please pray for him. Now, uh, TBN, the, the uh, news media says, uh, now reaches 93 million cable and satellite subscribers. I don't know what you believe about Trinity Broadcasting, but they're doing something right, folks. They're doing something right. And uh, I don't always agree with everything they teach. I don't agree with everybody that's on Trinity Broadcasting. I don't agree with everybody that comes on the Wiley and Wright Show. But we're here. Mission leader has been kidnapped there in India, and we want you to continue to pray for him. Uh, Judicial Watch founder Larry Clayman charges Simon & Schuster uh, is itself corrupt. Well, U.S. House of Representatives will vote July the 31st on a bill to overturn uh, the policy of legal abortion until birth in the nation's capital. You need to put this on your prayer list. You can, you can get in touch with Megan McCrum at 202-626-8820. Uh, the U.S. House of Representatives will vote on Tuesday, July the 31st, on legislation that would end the current legal policy allowing abortion for any reason until the moment of birth in the nation's capital. The legislation, the District of Columbia Pain Capable Unborn Child Protection Act, H.R. 3803, is strongly backed by the National Right to Life, 
the Nationwide Federation of State Right to Life Organizations. The Council on the District of Columbia, employing authority uh, delegated by Congress, repealed the entire D.C. abortion law. Thus, in the nation's capital, abortion is currently legal for any reason through all nine months of pregnancy. Now, folks, you don't have to be smart to figure that out. It's wrong to kill babies any time, but it's even much more egregious when you take a woman who's nine months pregnant, about to deliver her baby, and they kill the baby. What an absolute pagan, uh, pagan, pagan practice. And that's going on in the capital of the United States of America. Is it any wonder why we are against it being called the District of Columbia? I used to think the District of Columbia had to do with Columbus until I found out that Columbia was a false god, and I found out that's why they named it that, uh, because they wanted it to be named after a false god. What a tragedy that was. And uh, we praise God for folk that are standing against it. Now, China Aid's 10-year anniversary celebration is coming up. China Aid, our good friend there, Bob Fu and others, we praise God for them. They're going to be having a seminar on human rights and so forth. And I would encourage you, get in touch with uh, ChinaAid.org, ChinaAid.org, and our good friend Bob Fu. Bob Fu, president, and Mark Sean, news analyst, and uh, we're hoping to hear from them uh, maybe today, if not maybe uh, later. But we thank the Lord uh, for this. And... Uh, we praise God for, uh, you know, uh, we just praise God for what he's doing. Planned Parenthood death draws calls for abortion regulation. The death of a 24-year-old, Tonya Reeves, on Friday, just 10 days ago, following an abortion at Planned Parenthood, that is such a misnomer. They don't plan anything except death. They ought to be called planned deathhood. Planned deathhood. And so uh, we're calling for the abortion at Planned Parenthood. It was prompted uh, a new call for accountability in the state's currently unregulated abortion industry. These so-called clinics, they're nothing more than abortuaries. Ladies and gentlemen, did you know that the local mortuary has more regulations upon it than does an abortuary? If you die and your body is in a mortuary, they can't just chunk you out in the back lot. They have regulations. They have regulations. And when they do an autopsy, on your body, and they embalm your body. They can't just throw away stuff. They can't just put it in the trash. They have regulations. They are regulated on how they treat a body, a dead body. They have regulations. But the local abortuary have very few regulations. They can abort a baby and throw the pieces in the trash. Perfectly legal. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to regulate these idiots at the very least and put them out of business at the very best. And so, uh, LEARN, L-E-A-R-N, is the nation's largest black pro-life organization, and its Midwest director is not alone in sounding this clarion call for increased abortion regulation. The letter is co-signed by leaders from the Illinois broader pro-life community, including Aid for Women of North Lake County, uh, Belleville Area Right to Life, Catholic Citizens of Illinois, Concerned Women for America, Illinois, Illinois Citizens for Ethics, and so on, and many, many more. And so, folks, we need, we need to get behind these folks and get these abortuaries abortuaries regulated and then eventually shut down. The Life Education and Resource Network exists to proclaim the pro-life message 
within the African American community through various educational projects. LEARN's Midwest director, Pastor Caesar Laforley, uh, is available for interviews if you'd like to talk to him. Now, uh, we want you to know that we are available. If you're going to support Chick-fil-A Wednesday, if you're going to support Chick-fil-A Week, give us a call and let us know. And the way you can call us is call us on 1-800-839-3002. All right, fellas, come on in. And my producer is going to get you set up where we can get you on camera. Our camera crew is going to get the camera set up where we can come together and talk together. And um, ladies and gentlemen, we uh, talk about having a homeless shelter here at our church. Many of you have heard about that. Many of you have heard what we do. And uh, several years ago, we had a gentleman uh, come on board with us that uh, is a part of this homeless shelter. He lives here at the shelter. He works here at the shelter. He also serves as a minister from this church going in to a senior citizen's nursing home. And I want him to introduce himself, tell us his name, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, good morning, everybody, those listening on Crusade Radio, as well as Ustream uh, TV. Uh, my name is Peter Maxant, and uh, I've been doing, we've been doing the nursing home now for a couple of years, and i got to tell you, Pastor, it's the ultimate in mercy. Amen. It's the ultimate in mercy. Well, you know, the Bible says that we're to do justice. We've been talking about that in reference to what's going on in the world in which we live unjustly. But the second part of that, as we talked yesterday in our sermon, as we talk quite often in our sermons, as we talk quite often on this show, one of the things that we're to do is to love mercy. And mercy comes in different forms. Uh, just down the street here, for example, is a Buena Park Nursing Center. That means that there's a facility there where senior citizens are put there by their doctors and by their family, and they have constant care, 24 hours a day, around the clock. But they live there, they eat there, they sleep there. And one of the things that we've done is we try to have them or help them have church there. Peter, tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, I, myself, and my co-pastor, Ed, uh, we have about 30 people. We started with 14 uh, roughly about a year ago, and there was no notifications in the bulletin, and then the next thing you know, three weeks later, we're running almost 30 people. Amen. And they're the forgotten bunch, and some of them, it just breaks your heart. But my friend here, Cedric, had a chance to experience mercy at its finest. All right, well, let me ask you to do this. I want to ask uh, your friend Cedric to uh, look there at the camera and uh, tell our worldwide audience your name and where you're from and, and your, a little bit of your background. And then I want to talk to you about your relationship with Peter and your relationship with this ministry. So go ahead and tell our listening audience who you are. Good, good morning, listeners uh, uh, on Ustream and The Wiley Drake Show. First, I'd like to give honor to God, who is the head of my life. Uh, secondly, I'd like to uh, thank the pastor, Wiley Drake, here for giving me the opportunity to come and speak to his audience. Uh, thirdly, I'd like to thank my good friend here, the uh, co-host here, Peter Maxson, for uh, bringing me here and uh, allowing me to be a part. I am uh, born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. I am an information technology professional. Uh, most recently resigned two months ago from IBM Corporation and relocated to uh, California. I came here in pure faith, uh, not knowing where I was going to go, and by the grace of God, I was introduced to uh, the First Southern Baptist Church of Buena Park uh, that just does a tremendous job uh, in the community and reaching out uh, to folks, and um, I happen to be a recipient of, uh, of, of the great work that they're doing here in the community. Well, Cedric, thank you so much for sharing that. And ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who watch our program, you know this is going to be repeat, 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 but there are many of you that are watching new today that never watched this show before. Uh, and I've said three things about what we do here. Number one, we're a church. Number two, we're a church. Number three, we're a church. Yes, sir. We're a church. That's what we do. Now, the way that is practically brought out is on Sunday morning, we have Sunday school and worship service at 11. Then at Sunday night, we have Bible study and, Sunday, and the church on Sunday night. 
On Wednesday night, we have a midweek prayer service. But in addition to that, we have made an attempt over the last 24 years that I've had the privilege to be the pastor here. We've made an attempt to try to convert welfare to church fair. Yes, sir. And we do that in various and sundry ways. First of all, uh, we have a kitchen and a dining hall, and then we have a uh, dormitory where people can come and sleep and uh, get a place to sleep. We do not want people just to come here to get a handout. They can come here and get just a handout if they so desire. However, we try to make it a hand up, not just a handout. And in doing that, we have some requirements. In doing that, when we have someone come into the area uh, that would say, well, I, I'm in need of welfare, that is, I don't have any money, I need a place to sleep, I need a place to eat, and they would maybe go down to the government and ask the government to help. Well, what we have said is, don't go to the government, come here. We'll give you a mailing address, we'll give you a telephone number, we'll give you a place to sleep, we'll give you a place to eat, give you a place to go to church. The basic requirements of that, of course, are the fact that we are Judeo-Christian in principle. That means we're evangelical. That means we want you to attend Bible study and worship time and so forth. But if you do, you can come here and receive help. Now, uh, Cedric, you say you, you gave up your job, and for whatever reason, you decided uh, to come here to Southern California. How did you hear about us? Once I reached uh, Southern California, there was a, a op organization in Orange County called OC Partnership that uh, kind of put folks in, in line with places like this uh, who is in need of help. And um, they're the ones who put me in touch with uh, this uh, great organization that uh, First Southern Baptist Church have here. And that's how I came about uh, knowing about your church. Okay. And uh, folks, when people come in, whether it's Cedric, and I don't know how old a man are you, 50 years old. 50 years old. Whether it's a 50-year-old man that looks very capable and healthy, or maybe it's an older person like me. <laughs> like me. Uh, or like Peter, uh, mm -hmm. that would not maybe be as healthy and so forth. But we, we bring everybody in here, and we expect people to work, and we expect people to look for work, and we expect people to go to church. And so we're very strict about that. And we basically say if people want to just come and hang out, and get a handout, they're, they're probably not going to last very long right? because we want them to go to work and we put them to work and we expect them to stay, stay clean and sober and vigilant about uh, getting their life back together. And so people like Cedric come here. How long have you been here now? Uh, five days. Five days, okay. And uh, Cedric has come and right away um, met Peter. And so Peter, tell us a little bit about how you fellows met and what he's you know, doing it, now. It, it, that is quite a, a time around. quite a story. We both left the property, uh, not together, but singularly. And then three hours later, when I return back to the property, I see him walking up. So I, I, I said, Lord, this is this is going to be a god shot. I got to jump this guy because you've obviously <laughs> hooked us up. I mean, how many times does that happen? Yeah, that you're right. on for three hours, and then, and as soon as I saw him, I just was on fire. Amen. And we, this gentleman found a five hundred dollars cell phone out in front of the church, picked the phone up, put it into his backpack, and said, "You know what? I'll bet the guy that lost this phone is going to be calling for it." And while we were in the middle of discussing doing an interview, the phone started ringing, and Cedric says, this must be the man that has lost a cell phone. He answered it and was able to give this guy back his cell phone. And he had, t I understand he had tears in his eyes. Yes, he couldn't he believe that, and it was an expensive phone, wasn't it? It was like a $500 cell phone. And then, because we happened to bunk next to each other, he noticed in the middle of the night I had fallen asleep with my phone on my chest, rolled over, my phone hit the floor. He heard it in the middle of a deep sleep, saw, oh my gosh, somebody's going to step on that phone. And he went and took it, and he tucked it underneath my mattress. <laughs> now you tell me that's not somebody that's looking out 
for somebody's best interest. Well, it's, and, it, it certainly <clears throat> is, and, and that's, uh, you know, uh, I would be less than honest if I did not say that sometimes when we have a shelter circumstance, that that might not happen. Somebody no. might grab it and run with it. Right. Uh, I haven't lost a cell phone in many years, but I usually keep mine tethered about my neck. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, but we have had a lot of experiences here uh, with those kinds of things. We've had some bad experiences, but most of them have been very good experiences. And so, Cedric, uh, I would assume you're going to be looking for work, trying to find work, and uh, tell our listening audience if there's someone out there listening, if they're looking for 50-year-old that they'd like to employ, Tell them what kind of work you're looking for, would you please? Once again, I am a uh, senior Wintel engineer, information technology specializing in VMware virtualization and Windows Microsoft operating systems, third tier support, as well as Citrix, which is a thin client um, that uh, operates in most enterprise network operation centers and data centers. Okay. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to get in touch with him, his name is Cedric. And uh, you can reach him here at the church. You can reach him on uh, 714-522-7201. And by the way, for those of you who may have called that number recently, uh, I had forgotten how to use the message center. <laughs> and uh, my message box had gotten full. And so many of you called and it said, sorry, you can't leave a message. Well, that's been corrected. Yeah. I have learned how to use it. I ended up having over 600 messages in my box, and it took me forever to delete them, but they're all deleted, with the exception of maybe what came in yesterday or last night. But we'll try to stay on top of that. But if you'd like to call and leave a message uh, for Cedric or for Peter, for myself, you call 714-522-7201, and it'll give you a message. It will tell you that typically between 9 and 10 a.m., we do not answer the phone. That's not totally true. Depending upon how busy the show is, like on a day show, if the phone rings, I'll answer it right now, right. whether it's the 800 number or the church number. Uh, but we do say when you get the message that if it's between 9 and 10, we don't answer the phone. That's only partially true, or between 5 and 6. That's when we're on television and when we're on radio. So there are times when we would not answer the phone and let you leave a message. But you can leave your message on there, and uh, we'll get the message to either Peter or Cedric or whoever it might be, and we'll let them know that they've gotten a call. So call them, leave your phone number, and uh, they'll be glad to get back to you. Now, Cedric, uh, you've only been here about five days. You met Peter. You shared a little bit with us about that. Uh, and then somewhere along the line, uh, Peter sort of put the strong arm on you to take you to uh, the nursing home. And uh, that may not be the choicest place that people initially, well, yeah, I'm just looking for a nursing home to go to. But obviously he took you to the nursing home. Tell us a little bit about your experience at the Buena Park Nursing Home. This past Sunday, we woke up and Peter did strong arm me in a way. <laughs> yeah, I, I must I agree. Oh, yeah. But uh, in the in the spirit of uh, uh, of God, I felt in my spirit it was the right thing to do. Uh, we walked nearly five blocks uh, to Buena Park Nursing Home, and uh, once inside, I had no uh, idea what I was up against. But uh, the the uh, community nursing home community uh, residents were certainly expecting Peter. And uh, when we got there, it was just a very edifying uh, thing to do to get out of myself and give back to others. Uh, these There was about 30 uh, residents there, and um, God bless them all. These are the forgotten ones. Mm -hmm. But I must say, uh, everyone needs stands and needs a prayer, and Amen. the experience was just so great. And to know that we were representing First Southern Baptist Church of Buena Park, uh, just went in line very well. Uh, they, they welcomed our reception. We sung songs. We prayed for them. And uh, without and they, Peter... And uh, they got to listen to Billy Graham. They got mm -hmm. a chance to listen to Billy Graham. Peter brought all of his uh, technology uh, with him that would allow Amen. them to. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful, edifying experience to get out of yourself and give back to, to, to others. And Amen. Ed and I even talked, and we felt that that was the one of the best one of the best uh, services Amen. in two years since Ed and I have been doing it. 
and we actually had three people in their beds that they bring into the room mm. and there's one particular <coughs> lady whose eyes kind of roll up in the back of her head she looks like she maybe suffered a, a disability stroke but I went up to her and knelt and said the Lord loves you and Amen. when I said that her face turned mm. and looked at me and I almost cried Amen. these people everyone that you and I went to offered their hand Amen. because they just they just want to be touched they want to know somebody's praying for them they Amen. Want to know. all right well let's find out who this is uh, good morning God bless you and welcome to the Wiley Drake show you're live on television and radio around the world can we help you hello uh, hang on just a minute I'm sorry, I'll put you on speakerphone. Are you still there? Okay. Hello? Yeah. Can we help you? I'm just seeing y'all are, what, what y'all are doing on the program. Well, Tony, we've been talking about uh, the Chick-fil-A uh, fiasco, about how we're all going to support Chick-fil-A with going to Chick-fil-A on Wednesday. And I'm telling people that if they purchase their food uh, on Wednesday at Chick-fil-A on August the 1st, that if they will send me the uh, check, we will reimburse them cash uh, for half of their check. And that's what we've been talking about. And we've also been talking now about uh, a ministry that we have here uh, uh, that is a local nursing home industry. And uh, we've been discussing that. Uh, Tony, tell our listening audience who you are and where you're from. Uh, Tony Wright, and I'm from Waynesburg, Virginia. And I'm calling on a different topic because so maybe an uh, off key. Well, that's okay, brother. Uh, go right ahead. We're we're open. We've only got about seven or eight minutes, but go ahead and cover your subject. What is it? Well, I got a letter on them. I just received news that the liberal organization Veterans for Peace is calling for an impeachment of Barack Obama. At the same time, Liberal Congressman Dennis Kucinich is accusing Barack Obama of being in violation of War Powers Act. The tide is officially turned. I call for impeachment of Barack Obama can no longer the call can no longer be considered a cornerstone a conservative movement. That is why I'm sending you Anyway, the, the liberals are starting to see that they need to impeach the also. The well, people need to keep pressure and let their senators and congressmen know. Amen, Tony. And uh, as you know, this show is an activist show. You come on this show quite often, and we thank you for coming on again. And and I, I for one, am, am glad to see that there are more than just, quote, us conservatives uh, that are turning against an illegal alien in the White House and against a man who is turning our country in, into a Muslim nation. And I'm glad to hear that there are some, quote, liberals turning that way now. Thank you for sharing. We've only got a few months, I just pray in Jesus' name that we can do it. Amen, Tony. Well, with your help and the help of others, we can do it. God bless you, and thank you for calling, and you have a great, great day. God bless. All right, That's Brother true. Tony Wright. Let me finish with Brother Tony here. Brother Tony Wright, uh, about 25 to 30 years ago, went out one night and got drunk and ran off of a mountain in Virginia and broke his neck. And he calls it the finished product of the brewer's art. And uh, so he's been paralyzed. He's in a wheelchair. He can only move his arms. But he calls in on our program. He calls in on the prayer very line. Faithful, yeah. Very, very faithful. Very active man uh, in uh, righteousness and uh, conservative thought and so forth. And so you all pray for Brother Tony. We we're talking about the nursing home. Tony is not in a nursing home. In fact, he has uh, fought that over the years. I've known Tony for several years. And there were several times when the family said, Look, why don't we just put you in a nursing home? Uh, so they'll take care of you because we can't come and take care of you. Well, Tony uh, has resisted that because he doesn't want to go in there. He wants to be able to take care of himself, have someone come in and help him. And so he is continuing in his own home uh, as we speak. But 
there are circumstances where people cannot take care of themselves and they end up in a nursing home. And I'm going to give you a little bit of my history with the Buena Park Nursing Home. In October of uh, 1987, in fact, hang on just a minute. Hello? Hello? Are you there? This is... This is the Wiley Drake Show. Can we help you? I was calling because I was uh, looking at your YouTube video on um, Child Protective Services. Yes, ma'am. Well, let me tell you, let me tell you what we're doing, and uh, we only have about two or three minutes left. But what we're doing is we're doing what I call an expose of damage to the American family by Child Protective Services and Family Services, and we're doing that in connection with another gentleman, uh, a, a fellow by the name of Bill Windsor. And Bill is traveling around the country now doing videos and collecting a documentary of stories. I, from got, I, I got a story for you right now. Okay. My children got taken from me two years ago, and they stay with a pedophile. Oh, my goodness. Well, I, you, you need to... Yeah. Mm. Well, ma'am, listen, let me tell you what we can do. We need you to get that story to us. We need you to write it up. Do you send emails? Yes. What we need you to do is we need you to write that story up, and we'll feature it here on the Wiley Drake Show, and we'll also get it on the documentary with Bill Windsor. Bill Windsor is traveling around the country filming stories just like yours uh, uh, where... People have either made mistakes or just been victim of circumstances, and they have lost their children. So please let me give you an email where you can email your story, and then we'll pass it along and we'll use it on our television show as well as on the documentary. Now, the email, you've got your pen, you're ready to write? I'm ready to write. Okay, the email is Corey, C-O-R-I. H A R K I N S, Corey Harkins. R K E N S. C O R I H A R K I N S, Corey Harkins at, okay. at gmail.com. You email, you email your story to her, write it up, give us names, addresses, everything you can give us, and we will pass it along to our expose team to help us expose these terrible stories that are happening to people like you and people all over our nation. So please send it to Corey, C-O-R-I-H-A-R-K-I-N-S, Corey Harkins, at gmail.com. Okay? I got that. I got it. Thank you, thank you so much, and, and get it to us, please. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Okay, now, folks, uh, in reference to that, if you have a story, we want to document it. We want to put it on television. We want to put it on a documentary. Uh, Bill Windsor, there's a, another website you can go to to check him out, and that website is lawless, lawlessamerica.com. Lawlessamerica.com. And we'll put it on the documentary. We'll put it on television. Uh, uh, and we're running out of time, so thank you for calling. God bless you, and we'll talk to you again. Yes, sir, thank you. And God bless you. Bye-bye. Okay, go right ahead, my brother Cedric. Make okay. a statement. Uh, I just want to say briefly what originally brought me to California. For all the listeners out there, my wife suffers from fibromyalgia and also lupus, which are uh, immune deficiency and arthritic conditions and has been ordered to move to a warm weather climate. So I'd like to ask you all to please pray. Anyone that even knows about this, pray for my wife. And uh, finally, I'd like to once again thank Pastor Drake for allowing me Amen. this opportunity and all the extraordinary work that is being done here at First Southern Baptist Church of Warner Park. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cedric. Ladies and gentlemen, we're running out of time now. We've only got about a minute left, and then we're going to be out of here. Um, I want to remind you that we'll be back on at 5 o'clock uh, today. Uh, right here on crusaderadio.com as well as on the Show.com. If you're listening on Crusade Radio and want to watch us tonight at 5, 
Just go to www.thewileydrakeshow.com and you'll be able to tune in. And if you'd like to call, you can do that on the 800 number. You can always reach me on my cell phone number, which is 714-865-8132. We want your story. We want to document it. We want to put it on television, and we want to put it on the documentary. God bless you. Remember now, do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Peter Max. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Hang on a minute.